Well, obviously our community is really hurting um, and sad and there's not a lot that we can do, but we can pray, which is um, the best thing that we can do. An outpouring of support continues and it's stretching across the valley for all of the victims affected in the standoff that killed Officer Jason Mosier. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Baim. As donations continue to pour in, a small but strong group met tonight to help both the Mosier family and the Schumacher family. Valley News Team's Giovanna Simich joined them as they help in the best way they know how. Just a great appreciation for what they do. The ones that run to the, to the, the problems when myself and other people are trying to get away from them. And uh, I just think it's great that our, our community supports law enforcement during this time. As a jail chaplain, Mike Sanyu works with law enforcement and knows the impact of tragedy all too well that has hit our community. People can help you on, a, on, a, on one level, but there's a greater need that uh, only God can minister to. In this time of sadness, people across the valley have come together stronger. We can pray, which is um, the best thing that we can do uh, to be supportive, um, both to law enforcement and the families of uh, both the Mosier and the Shoemaker family. While this event may hit everyone differently, it's showing just how much people care. Out of tragic situations, oftentimes God can make things really wonderful happen. And I think we're seeing that as we come together as a community and we think of ways to support and encourage one another. Coming together as one in time of need truly shows that we are Fargo strong. Yovana Simic, Valley News Live. It was a sight that left many with a heavy heart today as dozens of squad cars lined the streets and highways to Grand Forks as they escorted Officer Mosier's body for an autopsy. Officer Mosier's body was moved from the Fargo Cass County Public Health Building to the Grand Forks Coroner's Office early this morning and back to Fargo again in full law enforcement escort as a band of brothers. Around 40 vehicles came from across the valley. Fargo police say it was an incredibly nice gesture by so many agencies to help in the department's time of need. An officer will always remain by Officer Mosier's body at all times until he is buried. Funeral arrangements have been scheduled for fallen Fargo police officer Jason Mosier. The funeral is scheduled for Monday, February 22nd at 1 p.m. At the request of the family, the service will be held at Shields Arena where there is a capacity to seat between 5,000 to 6,000 people. Valley News Live will broadcast the funeral on air and online for those who are unable to attend. Further details are expected this next week. As more people look to help the family by offering donations, one woman is making a piece so you can show your support. When Courtney Hurley heard the tragedy, she wanted to help out how she knew she could. She decided to make black and blue bracelets in honor of Mosher. Hurley has made hundreds of them already, and she hopes that people do ask for more. The bracelets are free, and all that Hurley asks is that you donate to the Bell State Bank Fund for Officer Mosher. If I made some, who would want one? And I put them as free. They can donate. I just wanted to give back to the community and to the officers. If you are interested in getting a bracelet, you can contact her through the Fargo Moorhead online garage sale Facebook page. And many area agencies have been offering their own ways to help the Mosier family. You can find them on our Facebook page and also share with us any ways you may be helping too. As the police department mourns the loss of an officer, Fargo Police Chief David Todd is asking the community to keep the Schumacher family in their thoughts and help them too. Chief Todd says, quote, in our role of protecting and serving our community, I also think of Mrs. Schumacher and her son who desperately called 911 asking for our help and protection. They were the victims we were initially responding to in order to protect them from a dangerous armed person. Valley News Live has been in contact with a member of the family and she tells us that the family is still trying to deal with what happened and have not been in contact with anyone besides some close friends. And there is a Facebook page that has been created to help this family too. 
The page is called A Family in Need and is approaching a thousand members. The group's founders say they appreciate the outpouring of support already shown. A group meeting is planned for Monday with more details on where and how to donate coming in the next few days. Law enforcement is dealing with a growing number of child pornography cases. The number one most searched for type of porn is youth or teens, which isn't legal. It's considered child pornography. Monday night at 10, crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us a new normal that could be leading your kids to contribute to the online porn industry. The snow and wind combination through the weekend created for some icy road conditions that caused a number of accidents in the area. Three people were hurt in a rollover that backed up traffic for a few miles along I-94 in West Fargo this afternoon. The 23-year-old driver was heading east on I-94 and rolled through a median just past westbound exit 343. That's where the Mapleton first responders arrived and pulled the woman and two children out of the car. The woman hurt her head in the accident, but it's non-life-threatening. The two children, ages 11 and 2, suffered minor injuries. All three of them went to a local hospital.